Welcome to this deep dive of Rike. Rike is project management software, and we're going to be overviewing whether it's right for you and your team in this in-depth feature. If you wanted to, you can jump over to Tool Finder to explore all project management softwares or get a little bit deeper into Rike over there too. And we do have a review over on Keep Productive as well. But you're here for a much more in-depth exploration of Rike. Now, Rike's been around for a while, actually got acquired about two years ago, 2021, by uh, Citrix, which is a much bigger company. And obviously, it's grown into much more of a expansive tool. So let's show you some of the core features. And I want to start with the ability to manage views. So as you can see here, these are part of a project. The project is and campaign. And these are tasks below it. You can create tasks, folders, and projects all inside of your account. And this is essentially a table view to get you started. Now you can see all of the details like name, assignee, status, due dates, impact, and budget. And of course, you can add your own using custom fields, which are accessible through here. Now there's quite a lot of different custom fields that are pre-created. So for example, duration, and you can see quite a, a high level of depth. If I put 1D, for example, one day. And of course, I can manage budget and things like that, as well as as many as a cousin feels as I want to. Now, there is some filtering here. I've set up due date as this one, but you can set up and sort it with whatever you find suitable. And you can also choose which um, fields to show or not if you don't want to go through this route. You can expand all of these as well if there's subtasks to them. For example, with this one, if I collapsed it, it would hide and nest everything that's related to the parent topic too. So you've seen enough of tables, I think. Let's go into boards and show you what a board view looks like. And this is very much moving across the different statuses to different areas. And as you can see, um, you can see different elements of this. I want to talk about this later on because this is proofing function, which is really smart. But this is very much the board view. You can organize columns to the task workflow that best suits you. You can edit the workflow so that these statuses are in a different order and you can indicate what's been deferred and cancelled so you've got more clarity as a team. Obviously, that will be saved to the marketing team, which is a space, but there are more spaces that you can create for teams. You can also browse other spaces if you want to find stuff that is external to your company or internal. You can also group stuff as well in here to make things a lot easier. Now, the Gantt view is nice and it's available through the team and business plans. And you can see how much level of depth you get. It's really neat. You can also add stuff, create stuff and start uh, moving stuff as well. It looks very traditional in its Gantt nature. And you can have things that are set up uh, dependencies. As you can see, things move and interact with each other as uh, the elements uh, sort of change inside of this account. And you can also link up stuff and create stuff, relationships between them. So you can see that this one, um, obviously the dependencies are quite an important role inside of here. So setting these up can be quite useful. And you can pop this open to start setting up the impact of it, the status of it, and what relationships each are part of. Now, there are a whole host of other views that you can access, like table board, Gantt, we talked about those already, but there's file, chart, calendar, resources. We'll talk about resources. These are called classic views, but um, and streams of everything, uh, which is basically like a feed and a time log, as well as classic board, classic Gantt, classic files, classic uh, calendar, if you were to go with less customizable setups. So other things I want to show you before we move on is actually inside of a task. For example, I've got this one, like set budget. This is actually quite neat, right? So for example, this is set budget. It has all of the relevant um, sort of task metadata per se, stuff that you can add to it, essentially uh, details of the task. Task metadata is really important because you get the ID and you also get the ability to modify what dependencies are set up and what is the predecessor and successors to them, which will help to improve your Gantt charts. Now, there is an ability inside of here to add a lot of detail to description. For example, here, somebody's add an image, and this is why it's so good for marketing teams. This is an image that you can proof, and there's a feature called Reich Proof, I think it's called. And as you can see, you can go and actually say, like, 
detailed information like this needs to be an Android. That's why marketing teams like it because it has the ability to really go granular with um, approval-based work. And that could be for marketing agencies, it could be for product marketing teams, and you can see how much of the extent that that's going to give you. Um, for example, you could put here like change font, please, and tag certain people. And as you can see, that's gonna to go to all the team. Now up here, you've also got a bit of a breakdown of the versions as well. You can see the comments that have been collectively added to this. You can see the version and you can edit it yourself. There is a downloadable edit uh, document editor function that you can access as well, as well as downloading the original file, opening the parent task, switching to light theme if you want something uh, less, uh, more intense on the eyes, um, and back over here. So that's a really neat function because teams are gonna be able to use that and really take advantage of it. Other elements of this metadata is you can add subtasks as well, which live in here, and they also have their own relationship, add files, and here's the approval that you and your team need. You can review the files as well as a time logger, which I'll come to in a bit. Now, there are some more magical functions here, like, for example, adding it to the calendar if you've got a calendar function. You can save it as a template, which is their feature called Blueprint, and you can change the item type to be a task if you did want to, which it is already a task. But you can actually open this in a new tab, and you can see the tabbing system pops up in the top here, which is nice for the multiple projects you have and a nice clean view to really go in detail with the task. So that's a little bit about the, I guess, the space, the places to organize different areas. And um, it's really helpful for that. And there are actually some more areas I want to show you. My productivity dashboard, this is basically a feature called dashboards and widgets. It's available only in the business plan, but you can basically add widgets to it. So I don't know whether anyone's used Google uh, Analytics. Essentially, you can really mold this in the report, like the reports function of Google Analytics. Maybe I'm speaking rubbish for a lot of people, but this is nice to be able to really customize what layout you want. And you can add loads, like for example, uh, conflicts monitor and really get an idea for if there's any conflicts coming up, start items, etc. And you can really change this and modify this. So think of this as maybe your homepage for your start of your day, what's going on, maybe a bit, a bit too overwhelming for some people, but at the same time, it'll give you an indication of how your account can be managed. So that's a feature called dashboards and widgets. It's in business plan, but it's going to be really helpful for a team and obviously everything backlinks into things so you don't need to go to it. The second function is called resource management. I call it workload management in this but essentially it's a way for you to see what your team are working on and what's quite particularly nice is this feature is more like a manager type feature because see see here this is me. I'm working eight hours a day sweating <laughs> but you can see um, what projects are assigned to that person? So for example, in this case, I have the IRS forms and the budget for setting the budget for the ad campaign. Well, let's say this is gonna take me four days. You can enable something called effort. And basically there's three types of effort modes, basic, daily, or flexible. I'm gonna go with flexible just to show you. And if I say this, this is gonna be five hours, this is gonna be three hours, this is gonna be four hours, and this is gonna be 10 hours. Right, so this is really neat. I've got two tasks on my list, and as you can see, they've all got different day workloads. This has filled my day up, this has almost filled my day up, this has almost just filled my day up, and this is an indicator that I'm allocated overload on my task. So if I have an additional person down here, I can actually basically allocate some of the workload to them, which is quite cool. So we can share the workload and make sure that it's not overwhelming. So this is great for managers coming in who are like, crikey, you know, Francesca looks like he's absolutely been sweating it out on Wednesday the 20th. So you can really get a, a much more high level view from here as well. And there's features like percentages of the workday and FTE. I don't, I'm not going to lie, I don't know that. Full-time equivalents, there we go. I'm working at two, two, two jobs here <laughs> on a Wednesday, uh, but not many jobs on a, on a Thursday. Um, so it's really all about how you can respond as a manager. And it might be by going, okay, that day you can work one hour. Um, or, okay, I allocated one hour for the day. Um, so if I go to flexible, I could be like, okay, look, 
do 0 0.5 on that day and be like, okay, do five on that day. So there we go. I, I, it looks like that sort of FTE is a lot better. But apparently it's still saying that I think the project won't be done because of it. So let's see if I can change that. There we go. Okay. So you can start to see the indicator really change as you grow and, and, and modify this. You can also add things per project too, which is quite nice. So this is the ad campaign you're working on and non-project tasks. So that was pretty cool, right? Um, this proofing function, that resource function, probably some of the most notable experience of this, but there's also request forms. Request forms are basically ways for you to set up an internal and external forms so you can save time. I set this one up earlier, it's internal new PC sign up. This could be for a new team member that wants to be able to set up things. But what's nice is you can set up response settings so that when this is created or filled in, it prompts you and assigns stuff automatically to you inside of this function. You can also enable a public link, which means that if you had something that was wanted to be shared externally, then you can have that. And let me show you what was created earlier from that. So if I go to marketing team, there's this one. So when I created it, it creates a ticket from it. And you can see that it's been created from here. So all of those details came in really nicely. So in my personal area, I was playing around with this feature called Time Log. This is really neat, which can be added to all of the accounts. But essentially, you can see that I spent 30 minutes on IRS forms yesterday. But you can do this by not only being inside something, but you can log it as time goes on. For example, you can pause the timer or you can actually leave a comment and add stuff on a date. So you can say, uh, last Saturday I did uh, 45 minutes and I can add the entry. So if I go back to the time log, which is a view inside of the projects, it should say, it should say I, I would have done that. Uh, did I add it properly? Let's see. Um, I know what I did wrong. Um, oh no, it's, it's it's indicated that I spent one hour and 40 minutes on this. Let's see where I was going wrong here. Ah, there we go. That's because it's logging this day. Whereas you can group by day, uh, you can group by user, um, and you can lock certain days in. So if I was like, okay, I wanted to see that the month uh, lock that in, and it should update it, but I, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But the indication is basically you can do this in terms of setting up a view to see how much time is being spent on stuff. This could be client-based stuff and quite helpful for that. But either way, there is some insights in here. You can see time spent being put here as well, and that'll set a timer so that you can constantly update it. There is a spaces overview page, which will give you insights into stuff. You can create projects and files down here. The workspace themes as well is quite cool in terms of setting up some nicer ones, um, and that's really up to you on what your you do, fancy is. The apps and integrations is a nice one, so you can set up all these apps and integrations and notable ones Right to do, you can set up sticky notes on your Chrome browser, Microsoft Teams, which means you get it accessible inside there, Miro and uh, Google Calendar, all available on Rike, but there are set plans that have access to certain ones. There is Rike Integrate, and this is probably a part of the business plan, I think, but you, for example, you can have integrations with um, pre-built connectors, which will basically, I think the idea behind that is to create uh, a certain amount of um, like setups so that it does actions for you. But you can see here that uh, this is obviously an add-on, so you have to request access. There's also compliance and security one called Write Lock and Project Syncs as well. So that was Rike, folks. It, hopefully this gave you a bit more of a um, sort of practical look at this. There's an inbox function in the search, but aside from that, this application is a wide uh, variety of experiences. It allows you to view things uh, in a good way. It's really great for marketing teams for proofing and resource management is a really neat function as well. It's a traditional tool packaged up with tons of features and I think you're gonna like it as an all-round experience. So if you're interested, check out our full insights on Rike in the link in the description or you can check it out on Toolfinder or if you're still in the hunt for project management software, you can jump over there too. Thank you very much, folks, and I'll see you again soon. I'm very sure it was Francesco from Toolfinder. I'll see you soon later.
Bye.